It's time to check out one of the most important sites in London. It's an 11th century fortress and royal palace that not only tells the stories and history and the fabric of London, but also of the separate Isle of Kings. Tower of London is an iconic site and a must-see when you're in London, attracting over 3 million visitors each year and recognized as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. But with high ticket demand and so much to see, it's easy to miss the highlights without proper planning. But don't worry, we got you. Today we'll cover all the ticket options, how to get there, and the must-see spots within the tower. And stick around until the end for a great lunch spot recommendation nearby. Before we get started, don't forget to like and subscribe and smash that bell so we can keep bringing you great content. The Tower of London is 900 years of royal history. It houses the crown jewels and the biggest diamond in the world. I'm Angel Castellanos for The Tour Guy, and today I'm gonna to give you the formula of how to explore the most popular site in London, the Tower of London. The tower served as a castle during wartime, the royal residence during peacetime, and most famously as a prison and execution site for rebels. You can see the spectacular crown jewels, take a tour from the witty beef eaters, or see the executioner's block where the course of British history was changed forever. The tower is located in East London. The quickest, cheapest, and easiest way to get there is by Metro, called the Tube in London. Take the Tower Hill stop, and the tower is across the street. For a romantic and slower way, you can ride on a Thames clipper boat that make their way up and down the river. From Westminster Pier to the tower, it'll take you about 30 minutes. For something so historic and popular, you want to book your tickets well in advance. The pro move is to take a tour to help you cover the 18 acres and almost 1,000 years of history. Tickets to the Tower of London can be purchased online. They include access to the tower grounds, the walls, the White Tower, and the Crown Jewels. Crowds are bigger in the summer and during school breaks. The pro move is to arrive right at opening and immediately head to the Crown Jewels, then tour the rest of the grounds. To find out more, check out our blog or the Historic Royal Palace's website. If you want to make things easy, jump on one of our tours. The Tower of London is included in our London in a Day tour, and check out the exclusive tours with the Beefeaters. One of the top things to see here in London is definitely the Tower. It's home to the Crown Jewels, and it was actually built in 1080 when William wanted to fortify his conquest here in England. As soon as he was crowned at Westminster Abbey in 1066, he started a building project, and one of the very first things he built here in the city was this White Tower. It was built around 1080, and he picked this particular spot because this was the site of the old Roman city. So he borrowed from the old Roman walls and this white tower was the first building and it took off ever since. The White Tower, the Crown Jewels, Castle Walls, Ravens, various towers, and Execution Site are the highlights of the visit and what you should not miss. It should take you about 30 minutes to see the Crown Jewels and 90 minutes to tour the rest of the grounds. This is the highlight of the tower and what you should see immediately after entering. There's often a queue outside, just like Disneyland, but there's no skipping this line. Get there before 10 a.m. or after 4.30 and the crowd should be minimal. Here you will see precious objects known as the Royal Regalia seen recently used during the coronation. Next are the various priceless glittering crowns, orbs, and scepters used for various ceremonies. The King's Scepter contains the world's largest cut diamond, the 530 carat Star of Africa. Also, keep your eye out for the 106 carat Koh-i-Noor diamond, considered unlucky for male rulers to wear. This is the famous Trader's Gate and something that you definitely have to check out when you're here. It's been called the Trader's Gate since the 1600s because people who were meant to be executed here at the tower were brought up the River Thames to this particular gate, up the stairs, and onto the execution area. The dramatic boat entrance from the Thames, known as the Trader's Gate, is where Princess Elizabeth, later Queen Elizabeth I, was brought through as a prisoner, haunted by the memory of her mother, Anne Boleyn, who was executed just years before. Other famous prisoners passed through here. While many entered this gate with little hope, Elizabeth was one of the rare few who walked out free. In every village in England, there is a green or town square. For those who lived in the castle during the medieval times, this courtyard was that green. 
It's also the execution site here at the tower. It's here where the wives of King Henry VIII, enemies of the crown, and evildoers would have had the privilege of being executed inside the tower instead of outside on the hill in public. You can check out the execution block inside the White Tower and the remains of the wives of King Henry VIII inside the Chapel Royal of St. Peter ad Vincula. The guys walking around in uniform are the Yeoman Warders, better known as the Beef Eaters. Originally, their job was to guard the tower, its prisoners, and the crown jewels. They got their nickname from the hefty beef rations they received as part of their job perks. You'll spot the Beef Eaters in their distinctive blue coats with red trim and top hat. The CR on their chest stands for King Charles III, or Careless Rex in Latin. On special occasions, they switch it up and were red. An interessante fact is that all beef eaters are retired non-commissioned officers with impressive service records. Nowadays, they've traded their guarding duties for guided tours, sharing fascinating stories and history with visitors just like us. Don't miss an opportunity to hear fascinating stories about the tower from beef eaters themselves. Check out the website and links below for exclusive tours with the beef eaters. There's actually quite a few things to see here at the Tower of London. So you want to take your time exploring the whole complex. You can come up to the middle wall here and walk around the whole property, exploring each of the different towers that were built in the 13th century, and they each have their own exhibition. According to the Yeoman Warders, one of the most famous legends here at the Tower of London has to deal with these characters right behind me, the Ravens. And legend has it that if the Ravens were to ever leave the tower, the White Tower would crumble and the kingdom would fall. And that comes from the time of Charles II, and the Ravens have been protected ever since. The 90-foot square tower in the middle is the original structure which the other Wallen Towers were meant to protect. The now iconic tower was built by William the Conqueror in 1077 as part of his military strategy over the newly conquered England. Inside the White Tower, there is a museum that houses impressive armor and tells the bloody stories of the tower's horrific past. The Royal Armory is where you can find the armor of King Henry VIII himself. And don't miss the exquisite and rare Norman Romanesque Chapel from the 11th century. Following the invasion of Britain by the Romans in 43 AD by Emperor Claudius, they established a city right here in this area called Londinium. And you can still see remnants of that Roman city today. So if you exit the Tower Hill Metro Station and walk downstairs, you'll still be able to see a little bit of ancient Rome. One of my favorite pubs along Fleet Street is called the Old Bank of England. They serve all the great classics like steak and ale pie, fish and chips. They have handful cask ales, and it's in a traditional old bank that's now been converted into a pub and restaurant. You gotta check it out. All right, I'm gonna go in for my steak and ale pie. It is piping hot, so when you eat this, you gotta be careful. It's like molten lava inside of there. Put it with a little bit of mash there. Mmm. Beautiful pieces of steak. A thick water crust, so it's nice and hearty. Mash is great. I'm gonna wash it down with a pint here. Oh, now we're in London. Well, that's it for our time here at the Tower of London. We skipped the line and checked out a castle in the middle of London that has so much history and even got a glimpse at the bling bling of the king. I'm Angel Castellanos for The Tour Guy. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe and smash that bell to find our next video. Happy travels.